Hello, everybody. This is Elijah Ignatieff of The Very Secret Plan, and I have a very special guest, Keisha Walker, today. And I have been following Keisha on Facebook. I'm not quite sure how long, but I, I think it's at least years. And I have a number of people that I find are posting the truth in, in a way very different from everybody else. And Keisha is one of these people. And one of the terms that she has brought to my attention is statism. And this is a term that I had not been familiar with, and I'm sure a lot of people are not familiar with it. But Keisha has a very strong opinion about the state of our world and what is happening. And with that said, I'm going to go in into Keisha and ask you, you know, what is your general assessment of what is happening right now with the pandemic that is happening on the planet? Uh, well, obviously there is something happening. Um, I can't really draw a conclusion because I don't know enough about it. I, I do know that I can't trust whatever the government says, and that is just based on historical data. Um, I can only look at what is going on and draw my own conclusions. I can listen to actual doctors and nurses that are treating these patients and they tell a different story than what the government is telling us. Um, they're also suggesting different treatments than the government is suggesting. So I just, the only thing I can do is, is uh, really just try to take care of my body and hopefully what I've been told growing up, if I take care of my body, my body will take care of me. Um, I, I'm really just trusting in that. Mm. But let's get more into this, you can't trust the government. Um, what, what to you is statism? Uh, to me, statism is the widely accepted um, religion or cult that government is way more than just a parent figure, but a godlike figure um, that is all powerful. It deserves our complete trust, our faith, and that nothing could be further from the truth. It is a predatory system. It is responsible for more deaths than, than anything we could possibly imagine. No virus, no, no, you can count up all the murders in all the world and they will never amount to as many people um, that the government has killed. And this, this doesn't even include war. Um, the government, you can look at every problem in the world and it will always lead back to a government. They do not solve problems, they create them. And we allow this to happen because we put so much faith in it. Mm. It is a dangerous, deadly uh, religion. And until we start seeing it for what it is, this will continue. Um, we can't keep putting more faith and more power in the state's hands and think anything is gonna change for the better. It's just not gonna happen. So, so what happens when you bring this up with people? Because I mean, what I find is you're bringing this up in a manner that is constant, is, uh, is very intelligent, but it, it, it seems to be crossing the boundary of believability in terms of a lot of people out there. So how, how do you find people well, I, I, it, it appears to come off as a heretic <laughs> and I've lost a lot of friends and family members have basically disowned me when I, when I speak out against their God. Um, it's very difficult. I try to be, I try to look, I try to come up with different ways of bringing it to the forefront. I, when people, I, I try to, I mean, anytime there's a crisis, I've tried to use this pandemic as a way to reach people. And, you know, going back in history, showing how the government handled the swine flu and how they will take any crisis and try to um, broaden their, you know, their power over the people and to, to just bring down an iron fist 
and it, they're not trying to help. They, they, they're going to use it to bring more surveillance. Um, already they're lock, trying to lock us down. Well, they tried to, and they're facing so much resistance, which is a good thing because a lot of people still value freedom, um, not just in this country, but all over the world. And they have the power of the media to shape opinions of the people. And they have people thinking that this is all about just getting a haircut, but it really isn't. You, um, people are protesting all over the world, but you look at the media and they'll just show people waving the flag and holding guns. And that's just deceptive. Mm. There are people all over the world that are protesting this shutdown and they're gathering in the streets and you don't see a, don't, you don't see a rise in deaths mm. because people are gathering in the streets, thousands of people. If, if it was as dangerous as they say it was, you should see many, many more people dying from this virus. Mm. But, you know, they're inflating the numbers and you're not even allowed to say that. Mm. Um, they blatantly say to you, well, you, you don't have to die from it for us to put it on your birth certificate. Mm. You just have to die with it. Mm. But then there's evidence that suggests that there are no, no tests that are even um, reliable. <laughs> you can't even show me one test that is a reliable COVID-19 test. Now you can test for coronavirus, but there are so many coronaviruses out there and they will tell you, no, we can't specifically pinpoint COVID-19, but they're going to label you as a COVID-19 death if you die with COVID but they can't even tell you if you had it. Mm. And, there's, and they're mostly going by symptoms. Um, so it's, it's a very deceptive um, system. It's, you just cannot trust it. And you can look at how uh, the swine flu was handled. They did a whole 60 minutes um, show on the swine flu, how they put out uh, immunizations that actually caused more damage than, than uh, it actually helped people. Um, they paid out millions of dollars for victims that were harmed by the, uh, by, the, by the shot. But people forget those things so easily or if you bring them up, they just dismiss you and I'd, I'd say it's really just a handful of people, but it's so frustrating because they, they get so loud and insulting mm. and they can't even make a case. You know, it's, they automatically start calling you an idiot. Mm. And instead of trying to argue the, the case, have a, have a discussion, they just automatically go into defense mode. Like they have something to gain by not even hearing you out. Mm. So I don't even know how to reach those types of people. It's like the indoctrination is so, it's, it's unpenetrational. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like, it's like something I've never seen before. Mm. I've never, I've never encountered this where you can't even talk to people. Well, here in Canada, I met a couple of people and they said that a psychotherapist and a naturopath and their association said they were not allowed to speak. They're not allowed. They will lose their license if they even speak about it in any manner. I, I'm wondering about, you know, I, I know 9-11 to me is a, is a big pivotal moment in, in your nation's history. And it's another sort of smoking gun in regards to, you know, what has occurred and then the narrative that's put forward that the buildings go down and fire in gravity in six seconds, even the third building wasn't even touched by a plane. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how you see the connection between 9-11 and this and also looking, okay, a little bit beyond the government of like the, the deep state or evil cabals or the Illuminati or secret societies or there seems to be some other force that has controlled the government in, in such a manner that they get away with these things. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, 
looking back, I do see that there is a, there have been cabals, there's the medical industrial complex, there is the banking industry, the military industrial complex. It appears to me that these are the three top dogs. Um, they cannot be touched. They do not like competition. Um, and you can't, you can't really get around them. Um, they, to me, seem to own all governments. You can't practice medicine unless you go through, um, unless you have a Johns Hopkins based medical um, history. Um, all, you know, um, the military equipment, everything comes through this industrial complex. Boeing, um, all of these, in, all of these um, companies that build these equipments, they funnel through the same, you know, they're, they're always the same people, the same, not people, but companies. I can't put my finger on a single person. Y you can trace back to families um, at the risk of sounding like, a, you know, anti-Semitic just because they have certain last names. Um, if they were, if they had any other last names, you wouldn't be an anti-Semite just for mentioning that these are these families. But it's true. <laughs> I mean, there are the Rockefellers. They, they always come back to these same groups of people. So I think it's safe to assume that um, even though this is, this would, I would say, 10 years ago, I would say it was these same people. But now it's almost like a new generation of uh, people. It's like these, these new groups of people are taking over. You've got Zuckerberg and uh, uh, um, Gates. Bill Gates has gained a lot of power. His money is, in, um, is almost everything now. Mm. Food, medicine. Um, pretty soon, I'm pretty sure you'll see his, his name is on weaponry too. Mm. It's frightening how much power he is gaining over, over our world today. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's really paying attention. Mm. Well, do you see like in my feed right now, I'm probably like every second post seems to be something about Bill Gates, either what he's trying to do or the people that are, are, are just starting to despise him because everyone's seeing that his, his, his power is gone now. To, it's like Mr. Burns, you know, in The Simpsons. Yeah, he's out of control, man. I mean, what is this guy? Why, I, I, the, I don't understand why the need for so much power. And then the, with the guise of being a savior, mm. you know? And I know there are a lot of people saw this coming a long time ago. You know, um, he's... He puts money in trying to make it seem like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm investing in saving the world and I'm, I just want to help out. But then you look at his return and investment. He just got $8 billion from all of these governments um, pledging to, to pledging our, you know, taxpayer money to help him find a cure. Who is he? I mean, what about all of the other nonprofit organizations that could be looking for a cure? Mm. What, I mean, we have Africa now that claims that they've already found one, a really cheap cure, and they're cut, they've cut off the, the World Health Organization altogether. Mm. And they have reported no deaths. So I, I don't know. I, I just think it's, it's very controlled and... They, because they have control of the media, um, the, the people are fed information and they have the, um, the illusion of, of knowledge mm. when um, it's, it's misinformation. And that's, that's so much worse than being uninformed. Mm. So it's, it seems to me like there, there's this great divide between the people that are sort of agreeing with the government narrative and those that aren't. And there's a battle online and both sides are looking at the, each other as being kind of insane. And there's this huge polarity 
between people all you know who might in ordinary life like each other and be friends but as soon as they start discussing this online if you question the vaccination or you talk about a chip being implemented or you bring up any sort of what they call conspiracy theories right away people will dismiss you or um, and I know someone like yourself and, and myself let's say who've been doing this for years this there's nothing new here we're just seeing another <laughs> another example of what they do but as, as you said, they have a very short memory. And I'm just wondering in terms of, uh, again, the mindset of the people, perhaps in, you know, in your nation, you know, wh what do you think is gonna happen as a result of, you know, if, if they continue with making things worse and worse? I mean, 40 million people out of work. I mean, th this is turning into and, and food, food shortage supplies. There's like three days of food for big cities. This, this is rapidly turning into our or Orwellian nightmare and right before our eyes. And we're all, to, you know, sitting at home on our computers watching it. And I'm just w wondering about, you know, your read of the people. I, I can only look at historical data again. And what history tells me, this is only going one way. Um, now we're at, you're risking my life by not wearing a mask. And we have these people saying, well, I'm not wearing a mask because I'm not, I don't feel the need to. If I'm not sick, I'm not going to do it. And we, all, we already had someone um, shot and killed for trying to force someone to wear a mask in the store. So... Um, we've also seen a baby torn from his mother's arms because she was on a corner protesting um, and she wasn't wearing a mask. Uh, so the way I see this going is not going to be good. Uh, we're going to end up in a civil war. Uh, we're already being pit against each other. We have people protesting armed while we have other people saying they're calling them racist and just because they're armed, oh, there's white men with arms, but I mean, if one thing has nothing to do with the other and we have people feeding into this race baiting thing, mm. it's really weird because this comparison is strange. Nobody can even explain it, but people keep repeating it over and over again. Mm. Um, and is, there's this meme going around with these white men holding these weapons, standing on the stairs of the Capitol, and um, a black guy getting shot. But one thing has nothing to do with the other. And what I would like to see is these people getting together with their arms and demanding that these tyrants stop shooting people for no reason and stop trying to enforce these unjust laws. Mm. You can't tell people to shelter in their homes. You, that's unconstitutional. Mm. You can't tell me what to do with my person. Mm. I don't care if you think it's gonna make you safe. And I know being a black woman who is not religious and I'm not a statist, that puts me in a very unique position. <laughs> um, <laughs> Most people like me worship both God and the state. And I choose my morality as my religion. Mm. Um, so I don't think anybody should be forced to do anything that's going to make me feel better or safer. Mm. I see this going down a very dark path because people, I've seen people say, I can't wait until martial law. These people need to be forced to stay home to make me feel safe. And these police officers will be all too, too happy to oblige. Did you and see that, that video of the police officer who was uh, talking to his fellow police officers and he was speaking about how, you know, we're, we can't go against the constitution and he's standing up for the people and then he's fired. You saw that video? Yeah, I did. And he made and he ended up getting in like close to what over a million dollars and go fund me. Really? 
No, yeah, yeah, he's he he did the right thing. Um, I, one thing did kind of concern me in his video when he stated, "You guys, you're gonna wake a sleeping giant. We don't want these people to, re you know." It kind of like, why don't we want people to awaken? Mm -hmm. You know, he wants us to. He wanted us to stay asleep so he, they could stay in power. And you know, I, I kind of got what he was saying. He was he was afraid of the people rising up, but I do think it's time. It's time mm -hmm. for us to stop laying down and taking this because it's only going to get worse. The the more we get used to accepting this this subject position, the more pressure, the more um, the the tighter these chains are going to get. The, the smaller our cages are gonna get. Mm. And we have to start standing up for our rights. We have to. Mm. And even though I don't think protesting is really effective, I don't think begging the rulers to give us more uh, freedom is the method that I would choose, but I do appreciate the fact that people are willing to go out there and do that because it is drawing attention and they are spreading a message. And, you know, these signs that they're holding up, they represent, you know, they're, they're saying that they want freedom. I just don't think that begging the slave master to let you go free is the thing to do. I just don't think that's going to happen. Mm. I, I believe that the only way to get your freedom is to take it, to stop. We are in a position where we just don't have to, um, you can just stop supporting it. Stop giving them your money, stop paying your taxes. What are they gonna do if everybody stopped paying taxes? Nothing. And the state can only rule by taking your money and paying the people to enforce their laws. Mm -hmm. Without that, they have nothing. What, what kind of... Uh... I guess support have you gotten online in terms of like what you're uh, sharing? Do you find it's growing or do you find it diminishes? Um, how are people responding to what you post? I definitely see that it has grown. I used to get so much backlash and now I kind of feel like I don't even have to post that much anymore. It's almost like I'm sitting back and I'm watching this army grow and it's awesome. Um, I used to think that my voice was, I, I used to think I wasn't doing anything. I, I used to get so down, but I started getting messages, people thanking me and telling me how I've changed their position and how I've, you know, just changed their outlook and, their, and shown them a different perspective. And even though some have taken a long time to come around, because I've been talking about this for a very long time, for years. Mm. And I even, you know, I even almost went back. I was, I got on the Bernie train for a while because I wanted to believe something could change. Mm. And it didn't take me long. The DNC con convention, I was done again. <laughs> I felt like I was fooled once again. And that was it for me. I knew that I, I knew I had just, the wool was pulled over my eyes and I used that. You know, I was like, look, <laughs> I, even I got fooled again. So I'm taking that experience and I'm putting it out there. And even though I was embarrassed when Bernie got up there and held Hillary's hand and backed the person that he said was the corp, basically said she's the corporate whore, but then he's supporting her. I felt like a, an idiot. Mm. But you know, I took that for the team and I'm like, look, we have to face this, see it for what it is and stop pretending. And, you know, um, I think people saw it too. And that was that I, I felt like that was that dim exit thing. That was awesome. Now, what I didn't like that people started dim exiting and going over to the Republican side. I'm like, what are you guys doing? That's not what I meant. But now I think they're starting to come around again because Donald Trump, they believe a lot of people wanted to believe that he was going against the state. Mm. And he talks such a good game. I, I listened to him for a little while and I'm like, I just, I was just waiting for him to start 
uh, going back on everything he said, and that happened. So I'm starting to see people come back around again, and it's great. Mm. What do you see as, as like a, a solution in terms of education? Because like what I found with you is I, I went from uh, 1,400 people, brought it down to 100. Um, I just wanted to get rid of, of every, everyone who wasn't participating, in a sense. Everyone I didn't know. I, I wanted to go back into a sort of solid nucleus. And you, you were one of the few that I kept that I, I don't know. But because of your postings, um, I find that you, you know, you're one of the few people that I pay attention to because I'm, you know, doing my own postings and doing my own sort of uh, captain sweepisms. Um, I'm just wondering because you're you're in the world of digital marketing, yeah. and um, I'm just wondering about educational campaigns and how to work as allies and how to create larger networks of people who share the same mindset. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, you know, I have a teenage son and I don't send him to public school. I, I actually believe in self-directed um, education. I encourage him to um, follow his own goals, you know. He's into animation. Um, he wants to create video games. So I just provide him with the tools to create animated characters and backgrounds. Hopefully he'll be able to join one of these teams in Unity when he becomes old enough so he can start um, building these things. So, But I think people should feed their passions. It's not up to anyone to tell anyone what they should be contributing to the world. Mm. Everyone has something unique to offer. Mm. And I think public education suppresses that. And it gives you this cookie cutter thing. And it allows these bureaucrats who are really just strangers that put some stuff on paper and pushes out these, you know, curriculums that they're paid to push out. And it, it doesn't do anybody any good. You look at these, all these people are not qualified to really do anything. So I just didn't want to do that to my son. I, I just, you know, and he's a lot smarter than a lot of adults that I know. <laughs> so um, I really think people should steer their own education. Whatever it is you're passionate about, pursue that with your entire being. Put everything you have into that. And, and you'll find your way. I truly believe that. I, someone told me a long time ago, um, do what you love and it'll take care of you for the rest of your life. I took that advice and I, I work from home. I'm able to stay here um, and take care of my son. And I've been doing it for over 20 years. Um, during this epidemic, I'm still working. <laughs> I mean, and, I'm, and I, I do it when I feel like it. I'm not on anybody's clock. You know, I wake up when I feel like waking up. Sometimes I'm working really late, but I do it because I love it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Um, that is really the best advice I can give anybody on education. Just follow, just self-educate. Um, because when you're relying on curriculum, you're only relying on what somebody else is giving you, what they're doing to you. Mm -hmm. When you're seeking out information, you become more hungry for it. Um, I love learning. I'm, I'm only to stay in business because I'm constantly learning all the time. And I just love it. I love it. I'm, I love feeding my brain. <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard of the Mayan calendar? The Mayan calendar? Yes, I have. Have you studied it at all? A little bit years ago. Um, there was something about it that made me, I didn't, I'm not going to say it seemed like it was debunked. It seemed like it came abruptly to an end at a time and we surpassed that time. So I kind of just dismissed it. Mm. Have you heard of Carl Kalman? No. He's written this book called the nine ways of creation. 
And I, I just interviewed him earlier today, and I interviewed him about three years ago. And he, the Mayan temples have nine levels. And then the nine levels represent nine ways of creation. And they, they map out the evolution of consciousness. And each wave is, is like it starts here billions of years and like hundreds of millions of years and millions of years. And the sixth wave was the wave of civilization. And then the, the seventh wave was, was the industrial kind of revolution. The eighth wave was like digitization. And we're now moving into the ninth wave, which is unity consciousness. And what he says is like, these are quantum waves that are sort of going through the galaxy that affect how our mind is structured and affects how we think and what we do as human beings. So he's saying there's this underlying pattern in the universe that these May the Mayans mapped out, put into their temples and left it as knowledge for us, which he has decoded and wrote in this book, The, the Ninth Wave, Nine Ways of Creation. And why that's important now is 2012 was that end of the pyramid it was it was like mm -hmm. coming to the end and in 2011 was the ninth wave and that was the beginning of unity consciousness and he's saying like the sixth and seventh waves are in duality and oppression and everything that we see in statism and as a government is a result of these two waves and that what's happening now is is this consciousness is now accessible for us, whether it's Christ consciousness or whether it's unity consciousness, but it's, it's you know, based upon love, based upon connection, based upon humans helping one another. And so what I see is there's these two paradigms. The old paradigm of thinking, it's based upon these sixth and seventh waves, it's based upon fear, based upon control, based upon everything you've been speaking about, but the new paradigm which actually it's like almost like a scientific fact. It's not a maybe, it actually is occurring, is, is happening. And the children that are, let's say, born after 2011 are very different. They're very, you know, they talk about these psychic kids. They talk about kids that can kind of, you know, read with their eyes closed. They have psychic abilities mm -hmm. all across the planet. All of the movies about mutations are, I think, are talking about these types of kids. And so as these, waves are happening underneath the higher waves are occurring so that the, as you go through time there's sort of ups and downs that change the nature of what kind of events are going to occur and what he said is is there's this wave going down right now that's going to peak at a low next september so he says and he's written a paper on the covid uh, crisis was happening and the mind calendar I can send that to you he just sent that to me but what it is it, it's it's like I deal with maps I'm very into mind mapping and I've been mapping the new paradigm business structure which I, I call a shared knowledge community and it's it's looking at what you just said like the organization of business should be based upon a person's gifts and their passions and that's the main thing rather than some commodity or product where you know some fat cat at the top is getting all the dough we should spread it out be more of a network and have that network be supportive of the artist be supportive of the originator and not try to juice them like they always do you know in, in the old paradigm mm -hmm. structures so to me we need to self-organize into a new business structure because those old structures are dying and and they're not Absolutely. good for the people and so, you know, one of the, the, the ideas I've had is, a, is like a media game called Planetary Guardians, where people start to come together on teams, a team of four, and you start working as a team, and then you get five teams of four, that creates a superhero team of 20. Like, imagine 20 high-end creative people actually working together, cooperating, helping each other, and then having mm -hmm. seven of those teams that's 140 people and a founding team of four, it creates a shared knowledge community of 144 people. Hmm. And that's like a cell in the new paradigm. And the, the cell in the old paradigm is, is the corporation. And have you ever seen the movie, uh, The Corporation? The documentary? Oh, I think I have. Um, I watched so many movies like that though. I, uh, you know what? Let's just assume I didn't. 
<laughs> okay, it's a, it's a Canadian documentary, and, and basically what they did is they analyzed the corporation as an entity and showed that it has the exact same attributes as a psychotic individual. And it's, it's a brilliantly done documentary, but what it's essentially doing is it's pointing to the fact that that corporation you know, has no accountability and is mm -hmm. responsible for what's occurring right now. And so we need a new cell. We need a new methodology for humans to come together that isn't linked into that old paradigm of thinking. And so, you know, what I'm looking for are like new paradigm thinkers who want, who want to do a more of a love-based business, who, who mm -hmm. want to create a new system. Like what I see in you is you have left, like you're, you're like Neo, you have left the matrix. You, know, mm -hmm. you are no longer participating. You participate, but you're not participating in mind in that whole shenanigans. And because of that, like the agents in the matrix, you get attacked because you are an example of this positive thought virus. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people like you all across the planet, but we're isolated and we're more alone. And, and, and you know, to, to most people, we're insane. But when you start talking to someone who's of the same mindset, you're... They're on exactly the same page. Absolutely. And, yeah, and so, absolutely. And so I, so it's I'm, funny I'm, you say isolated is a perfect is is the perfect way to, to to describe me. I've actually moved so far out in the country now, and I very rarely leave my house. Even before this, I mean, this lockdown has not changed my life at all. Hmm. <laughs> I wasn't leaving my house before, except to go get groceries, and now. It's like, really, all it's done is force me to shop even more locally, because if I go into town, I see people wearing masks, and they don't do that here where I live. Nobody's mm. wearing masks around here. Mm. So I'd rather stay around people, you know, that aren't doing that, and, you know, that are okay with walking amongst their neighbors and, you know, talking to each other and... um. So I just kind of stay right here in my own neighborhood now. I don't even venture out. I mean, I probably put 10 miles on my car since this whole thing started. Mm. So I would definitely be interested in connecting with people again. <laughs> I've, I, I don't even want to get used to this. I don't want to, to get so isolated that I'm, I'm so comfortable with being disconnected from people because I am getting there. And, and I've started posting a lot less on Facebook. My husband mentioned it. He said, you know, I'm starting this. He's, and, and it's almost like he's proud of me for not posting. He's like, yeah, I see you're getting it now. Nobody cares. Nobody, you know, just let them, go. just let them be. They don't care. I'm like, I don't feel good about that. But it's like, he's cheering me on like, yeah, leave them alone. Let them, they're not going to come together. Nobody wants to hear it. And, but then, you know, when he does that, that, it's almost like it motivates me again to start talking. <laughs> mm. And I don't want to leave people alone. I want them to wake up. Well, I mean, if, if, if this is anything, I, I would just like to say, and I'm saying this to Carl, like I see you as a hero. I see you as somebody who has the courage to spread the truth. And, and the, the, like that cock getting fired. I mean, anyone who's out there who's standing up to this, they're the ones who are the first ones hit, right? Like they go after the, the leaders. They go after the people who have the courage and strength to stand up and say something. And I think yeah. looking like Julian Assange, you know, who again is, a, you know, to me another hero where we need to be rallying behind. We need to be supporting people like that because they're doing something that no one else can do. You know, you're doing something which no one else can do. And there's a lot of people, let's say, watching from the background who let's say support you and love you and like you, but they're not willing to stand by your side because they're right. afraid. There's a right. lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. And, and I see in you that you've left that behind, right? You, you're, you know, at some point, Neo leaves the matrix and realizes that he's the one. And I think like yeah. you're the one and, and different people who are the one know that they stand in truth. And once you stand in truth, there's nothing to fear. Right. And I, I, I just wonder sometimes about, you know, your more, your emotional state, as you said, you know, feeling isolated. Um, and for anyone watching out there that, you know, I think there's far more of us than we know. Yeah. 
and we need to I I so. self organize. I like to think so. And it would be nice if we could organize. I think that is key. I watched, um, and not saying, you know, not suggesting violence, but I watched The Patriot again the other day. Mm. And the only way the Redcoats were defeated was because they, you know, the people organized. They got together and they came up with a plan. And they came out on top. There's literally no other way. This, this isn't, nothing is going to be, yeah, of course I can come out in, as an individual, but how does that help future generations? Um, it, it doesn't. It's, you know, and eventually, you know, somebody's going to knock on my door, like these contact tracers, <laughs> you know? Uh, so we do have to organize. We have to stand up. It's let like, me let me ask you about I don't know if you've seen any of my posts about planetary guardians, but what what do you think of that name, planetary guardians? Um, I when I first saw it, I kind of felt, you know, I really don't like the authority. I don't like the authoritarian concept. I don't like I like feeling equal, and I like everybody feeling equal. I don't want to feel like someone is above me and I don't want to feel like I'm above anyone. Mm. Um, and guardian does give me that sense, like somebody's trying to be over me. <laughs> and I am a, re I'm a rebel at heart. <laughs> and I, it just kind of, it, it, it's, it's a repellent a little bit. It, it repels me. Okay. Well, it's, it's good to know. I mean, to me, like planetary guardians are, it's kind of like we need something to identify that isn't national and that isn't a religion, but some sort of organizing force that to me uses media. Because what I see happening is, is, is the whole, let's say war or battleground is for the minds of the people to, yeah. to, to convince them of things. And the reason they're winning in a sense is because, you know, they're, they convince people of lies. And so right. what I see you as is like a lighthouse. And what you're doing is you're sending these messages out there and you're sending these messages out and it's conflicting to the normal narrative. Now, to, to some who already agree, they go, yeah, yeah, way to go. I agree to you. But to, to the next level, you're, 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 you're sort of irritating them because you, you're presenting something that goes against their normal thinking. And in terms of cognitive dissonance, right, it, it, humans... If, you, if you're saying information that goes against what they believe, they generally just dismiss you, right? They just say, okay, I'm not even right. gonna look. But I had a teacher a while back and he was bringing this information to me and I was like that. I mean, some of the information is so horrendous that you don't wanna believe it. You, you, you just mm -hmm. don't wanna look at it. But, it. but if you finally break through and then you start to look at it and examine like with a logical mind, you know, the evidence is, is there, it's all there. And, you, and, and, it's, and it's a big step to get to the point where, like you, you're, you actually question the authority of the government or whoever that is trying to uh, uh, put these types of uh, draconian methods on us. And so, I mean, again, like I, I see you as this, as a person who, you know, has the truth and you're sending it out there and you're sending it out with, without fear. And, and you have no idea, you know, how many people you're influencing. Mm -hmm. But again, like if you're on a team and then those teams are teamed up and you start to get tools and you all are helping each other with the info tech. It's like, you probably know that you're probably a lot more advanced on the computer than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But if all of a sudden you teach them and all of a sudden they start doing what you're doing and they start passing on what you have, you know, we become our own media and we start to influence the people around us. And now there's, there's an alternative large organization internationally that is presenting the truth that is presenting, you know, an alternative. I love that. Instead of just one guy, like, um, you know, you've got wham and you've got high impact flicks. You've got all these guys that are doing their own thing which is great. And they've all got large audiences um, and they've got different, you know, opinions, but 
yeah, if if we're all on the same, you know, page and instead of putting out opinion pieces, you know, sticking to facts, I think is very important. Mm. Um, I've learned to separate my feelings and try to keep my opinions to myself. Um, because I've gotten caught up in my opinions and, you know, have gotten checked on them too. So I try to just keep that, keep those things to myself and just whatever the facts are, stick to that. Um, but yeah, any, if there's anything that you, you know, feel like you need me to do, um, you know, and, and within the area of my expertise, just let me know. I'm, I'm, here, available, and I a lot of things I do with my son um, that even he can take on as a part of his um, un, un, unschooling. I say homeschooling, but I don't homeschool. I actually unschool my son. Mm -hmm. I encourage him to um, just be the best version of himself. Mm -hmm. Well, I like there's two things that I've been personally developing. Let's say as an inventor, one is called the inflow matrix operating system. And it's a universal business structure to organize any job, any organization, and any community. It's a set of maps that have universal concepts that you can use to basically organize anything. That's the mm. underlying operating system. And at first, it's like a mental operating system. It's, it's like looking at we need to connect how we think with how we organize on the net with how we run our businesses. And to have that as a shared reference point because there's so many different worldviews on the planet right now. There's so many different belief systems, right? Like you know, humanity is, was isolated in pockets and over thousands of years. Now we've come out and now, you know, everyone was sort of at war. The worldviews were fighting, but now here we are like the 21st century humans. And, you know, most people to me don't want war. They don't want to, to ruin countries. They don't want to participate in that type of stuff, but we've had this war propaganda you know, since we were growing up about that glorifies war and says it's yeah. you know, the way we're supposed to be. And what Carl Kalman was saying about this, this, these waves of consciousness is this unity wave is an actual, you know, is leaving those sixth and seventh waves of civilization and industrialism. And so, yeah. there, so there is this hope because I think, you know, humans have this belief that we have to have conflict. We have to be in war. It's part of our nature. But it was especially part of our nature as a result of this kind of like quantum fields that we're in. And it's kind of like as we enter into these new spaces, our whole consciousness changes. You know, I, I think we, we, we have this belief that there's like a prophet comes along like Buddha or Jesus and, he's, and they're presenting some new idea. And uh, the, the, the new idea, you know, either registers or it doesn't. But it, in, in this worldview, it's that the actual kind of quantum field that we are encased within is what we connect into it. It's like, I don't know if you know about mushrooms, but there's this mycelium in the forest, right? And the mycelium is like the connective tissue amongst the whole forest. And then isolated mushrooms pop up. But the mycelium mm -hmm. is what connects everything in the forest together. And it's kind of like we're like that. There's a field of consciousness around the whole planet and that we, we tap into it. It's like our big internet. And mm -hmm. that when you change that field in relationship to larger galactic timing structures that the Mayans actually mapped out and were you know, way advanced in terms of the mathematics that they were dealing with, then the minds of the people connect into this. And so what they're doing right now with this COVID pandemic to me is they're hiding the fact that they're implementing this 5G rollout network. Mm. And so if you look at the whole planet covered in these satellites, and then you look at mm. these transmitters every 400 feet, you know, the downside is they have no research into, you know, the health effects, absolutely none. And if you look at sort of pandemics in the past, like this, uh, what happened with the, the influenza after World War I it was because radio signals were coming in. And Absolutely. Two, yeah. Another one happened oh, in radar. You can't coming. say that because you are a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> this is, I mean, and this you is why they took, took down. The timeline adds up. It adds up. 
<laughs> well, they took down David Icke for saying this, right? I mean, his main thing was he was starting to bring the connection between the 5G and the pandemic and 7 million people heard it and then boom, he's off, right? Wow. He got taken out. And I think, I think the main thing that they don't want to see is they don't want humans to question this 5G rollout because it's coming out in 2020, right? Right across. And what about Wuhan? Wuhan was the first city in China to get 5G. First city in China. Isn't that, you know, there's a correlation between these 5G rollouts and this pandemic because what happens is the frequency that they're doing is affecting the body and that whatever's in the body is getting this unnatural frequency and that is inducing the sickness. And, mm. and, and people aren't sort of putting that together. And so they, you create, like, like, look what happened last year, like the Hong Kong, millions on the streets, France, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in the street in Canada, they were blockading across the whole country, right? These, mm -hmm. these are the people are uprising, they're sick of it. And then boom, got this pandemic, boom. You know, there is nothing better to shut people down than public safety, right? Who can, you know, who, 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 can, who can say no to that? But that's backfired because now they're out there again in droves and now there, there are more of them. So they're gonna have to do something else. Mm. Um, there's, they, they're planning, you know, there was event 201 mm. planning for COVID-19. Mm. Well, they've got another one coming up. So we can expect something else. For sure. I mean, th this is just the beginning. This, yeah. This is just the, you know, we're testing you out. We're going to see how far you can go. But I mean, I, I think yeah, talking about some kind of uh, another respiratory infection, um, and this one's going to kill. They're they're saying this one's going to kill millions mm. of people. And if they are um, staging something like this, you can guarantee. Damn tea. It's going to happen. So I've, it's almost like I'm to a point where I really just feel like I just want to just live my life and do whatever good I can while I'm here. You know, because I feel like they're going to try to take out as many of us as they can. And whoever's left, they're going to have us, have us submit. And this is going to be like Soylent Green, mm. you know? Well, this, if you look at the media, and I don't know if you're tracking, you know, a lot of the shows on Netflix and the movies, there's so many futuristic shows. And, and what do they all have in common? There's always this brutal government that is in complete control. And there's a, like an isolated hero and they, they may win, but they never question the fact that there's this psycho government. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. in all like, like have, it's you, normal. have you seen the, the show oh, yeah. uh, Colony? Yes. Oh, yes. Like it's just normal. What did you think about that? I, I'm. Isn't there another? Shouldn't there be another season? <laughs> well, he was just going. He see they cut. They stopped it just as he's going in that. That, you know, they, I don't know about you, but that I show is, is is happening now in terms of the colonization like putting walls around cities stopping movement having fear having humans control other humans yeah you know yeah. they futurize our minds to get ready for what they're trying to do right predictive programming yeah yeah they've been doing that for a long time i really feel like this is something, you know, I used to call people that would talk about Agenda 21 conspiracy theorists. Mm. Um, it wasn't until about two years ago that I realized these people were probably onto something. Mm. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, so I, I, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering about something, because like I, I've had this idea called, you know, The Very Secret Plan. So I'm loading this up into the YouTube, The Very Secret Plan. And to me, it's a web TV starter show. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, I don't know if you want your own show, but to me, this is how we do it. We, ha we have to gain numbers, we have to gain notoriety, and it's either you hide in your house or all of a sudden you become very well known. And someone like David Icke, you know, who's been doing this for years, I mean, he's still alive and he's, you know, he's, he's been putting forth this information for a long, long time. 
And yeah. I'm just wondering about you in terms of your own uh, desire either to re remain, I mean, to me, this is your first interview, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, to me, it, it was what a, big, call a keyboard warrior. <laughs> it, it, right. But it was a big step. It's kind of like, to me, like I'm, I'm looking for all of the new paradigm leaders. I'm looking for all the people who already have the mindset, understand what's going on, but again, are isolated and are looking, you know, for support. They're looking for help. They're looking for, you know, who are the other people who actually see what's going on? And, and I'm certainly a very nonviolent person. And I think that before you get to violence, it's like, we have the numbers. There's billions of us and there's hundreds of thousands of them. And for the first time in our lives, we get to make, make media. Like I, when we were growing up, right? You couldn't do this. You need a studio, you need hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then you need the permission of the studio owners to even do anything. And right now, everyone on the planet can be their own media. Right. So, Absolutely. so we, we've gone from something that's impossible to something that's possible. And so I think there's this window that's open right now because they are actually extremely scared of people like us because we're the ones that can actually sort of pop the balloon. We're the ones who are not buying the narrative. We know exactly what's going on. And it's, it's almost like they're on stage and, and they've got this whole crowd in front of them and everyone's listening, but we're in the back and we start talking and more and more people are turning around and listening to us. Yeah. And I, 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 I remember, I don't know if you were involved in Occupy at all, but no. I, I was involved in Occupy in Vancouver and we were in this church and there, there was like the, the mayor was giving a speech. And then I saw something happen I've never seen. There was like maybe 700 people in the church, but there was like 400 people from Occupy had come <laughs> marched down and, and we were in there. And in Occupy, when you wanted to talk to the crowd, you would say, you kind of get their attention and, and, and then you'd say something and then everyone would repeat it. So you say, I want to say something. And then everyone go, I want to say something so everyone could hear it. Okay. So right in the middle of the mayor speaking, person stands up, boom, starts speaking, completely takes over the meeting, <laughs> says this great speech, then another person does it, and then another person does it. And for the first time in my life, I saw how to break their control because they always control the conversation. Mm. right they choose who goes up front the mayor and maybe a couple people and they're the only ones who get to give their part of the narrative and there's no chance of coming up with why are you the mayor or why is this whole system what you know questioning the authority and so occupy to me was the first time that that happened mm. and i don't know if you you know much about occupy but in vancouver they fed thousands of people for free for like a month and people from all around were giving food. And it was the biggest thing that if you were standing there, you got free food. You didn't have to pay. And the people organized it and they organized it easily. And it, and it was like going, wow, we've got all these homeless people. We've got all these people that are hungry. Wow. And we have all these resources. But why did that happen then? It was because the people were doing it, not the government, not the corporation. So. I just think that because of this ninth wave, there is this future hope. And what Carl's saying is we're going into a dip. So by September next year is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Who knows what will happen, but then we're going to come out of that. And when we come out of that, it's going to enter into sort of, I don't know if it's a thousand years of golden light, which some, sometimes they say, but yeah. I, 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 I know that we have a very hopeful future, but you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the storm is coming. There, there, there's a big storm coming and it's going to be the wake up call because everyone's going to see how bad it can get. And no one wants that. Right. Like, right. Like deep down, everyone just wants to live, have a family, have love. You know, we're very simple. We, you know, we, Nobody wants revolution unless every right is being taken away from us. Yeah. I guess I, I am fearful as to what they'll do 
because of the resources that they had, you know, at their disposal. Mm. I honestly feel like the true divide on COVID-19 is whether nature or the government is doing this to us. And most of us that have been paying attention know that they knew that this was going to happen. That I do know. Did they do it on purpose? Inadvertently? Um, I don't know. Um, are they capable? Absolutely. freaking lutely I mean, look at what the syphilis, you got Mockingbird, you got, I mean, I can go on and on and on. You know, people ask me, why don't you trust government? Because I've been around for a while. I'm over half a century old. I've seen some things. Um, and I'm afraid I'm going to see more. And it's getting desperate. These people have gained so much control that they've got to be in fear of losing it. They have become so big and have pillaged this world of so much. And I just can't imagine them not being afraid of losing that control. <laughs> My dogs. <laughs> Interesting <Calm> timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can imagine them not being afraid of losing it. So what would be their next move? You know, um, what, are, what's, what's, what are they gonna release on us next? Yeah, I mean, I would guess that this is just the, this is just a trial run and then yep. something else will come in and then they'll do it even stronger. This is just to get people ready for it. Because, you know, mm. you know I, think, I think like what happened, like what, what was happening in Hong Kong, right? I mean, millions of people were on the street and we're not leaving. And now, yeah. you know, nobody's on the street. So, you know, they know it's kind of like as they're squeezing tighter and tighter, it's it, like all it's going to do is a fly in my house. <laughs> and she is freaking out about a fly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about well, that. Well, I think we're probably coming to the end. Um, so you're okay with me posting this? Yes, absolutely. I will uh, put it up and we'll, we'll go from there and see what happens. And I'm very glad to meet you, finally. Yeah, you too. And, and uh, uh, yeah, if you, want, if you want, we can build some kind of platform. And, you know, I, I was building something a long time ago where I was going to have people come and do debates on certain um, issues. Uh, I never really mounted to anything. <laughs> it's well, called breaking silences. I, I like I re, like right now I'm actually I'm building a software program that is going to sort of revolutionize chat rooms, uh, the ability to create missions to change conversation types. Um, I've created card sets. I've got ga game boards, maps. I've I spent 25 years, pretty much 10 hours a day, working on one plan, hmm. one one idea. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I've, if you I've, want me to edit this down too, I can do that for you. What's Just, that? You know. If you want me to edit this down so it can be less than an hour, because I know a lot of people have short attention spans. Well, I think we can do both. Like I'll I'll load this up as it is, and then you can you can do exactly what you want with it. You can take bits and pieces out, and you okay. you know to me work your magic, you know for sure. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Sounds good. So I really uh, appreciate you having me on. This was a pleasure. It was very nice meeting you. I, I look forward to getting to know you and your family more. Say hi to your husband and your son, and uh, they'll get to watch this and see what they think. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Same here. Okay, bye, Keisha. Okay, bye. See everybody.